When you're playing Truth or Dare, which it may have been a while since you've played Truth or Dare, maybe some more than others, but go back with me. You're playing Truth or Dare. Who here picks truth? Raise your hand. Ooh, good, okay. And who picks dare? Nice, pretty evenly split. So I usually pick truth. I know my truth, so it's more comfortable for me. And I've grown really comfortable speaking the truth. A long time ago, I realized that it was actually really hard to lie and to keep up with lies. And so I decided that I just wouldn't do anything that I wasn't comfortable with everybody knowing. That felt good to me. It felt a lot easier. Um, but I will say that gets a little tricky sometimes when you have four kids, for example, and um, they want to talk about Santa. So for us, Santa represents the spirit of giving, which is both real and true. And then they'll ask like, oh, hey, mom, did you ever smoke cigarettes or <laughs> pot? Um, those I actually don't get creative with. I just speak the truth, and I tell them the truth because that's what I want them to do with me. So dare. It's funny. I don't really see myself as someone who takes on a lot of triple dog dares, but um, when I think about D.A.R.E. the way that Rebecca Solnit describes it, she says, being willing to walk into the unknown, or as Brene Brown calls it, braving the wilderness. Now that I love, and I'll raise my hand for every time. Well, maybe not every time. Like, <laughs> that I'm not going to do. I wouldn't dare do that. But that's actually not unknown to me. Like, I know how that's going to end, and that won't, that won't be good. But I do love to try new things. I love to go new places, even if that means getting on a tractor and then a boat and then hiking eight hours deep into the jungles of Costa Rica. Yeah, I'm in. Sign me up. Um, and that's because I love to learn. I love to push myself. I love to say yes to what's really uncomfortable because it's when you're out there, like really out there on those skinny branches, that you learn the most about yourself, about others, about the world. Um, when we walk into the unknown, there's an incredible opportunity to find great things, beautiful things. So I started my college career let's call it, uh, at DePaul University in beautiful Greencastle, Indiana. Um, and after my sophomore year, I moved out to Colorado with a friend. We were supposed to go for the summer. Um, we were lifeguards that summer and ended up staying. I was a ski instructor in the winter. It was kind of amazing. But after a year of being there, I knew I wanted to finish school. And I thought I would always come back to Colorado, uh, back to the mountains after school. So. I wanted to go somewhere different. And so I went on a trip. I went over to Arizona and California and up the coast. And as soon as I got into Oregon, I just I loved it. It was beautiful and amazing. And um, so I moved there away from anyone that I knew uh, within like a full day's drive. Um, but it was there, away from everyone, that I really found myself. When there weren't any influences, I was able to discover what I loved and what I didn't love and who I wanted to be. Those are those character building opportunities, if you dare to take them on. So after being in Oregon for um, about four years, I took what felt like in another, another enormous leap of faith, and that was to move back here to Lexington. So family is super important to me, and my entire family is here. But I found myself there, so it was hard. 
But I knew that I would find something here. Turns out, it was someone. I moved back home in 2002, in October of 2002, and I met my husband just a few months later. Tomorrow, actually, we celebrate 17 years of being married. So I want to share with you why I married him. Whit Heiler is the most creative person I have ever met. His mind works so differently than mine. Well, really anyone's, but (laughs) especially mine. He is totally a triple dog dare kind of person. And you cannot believe a single word he says. (laughs) Like, seriously, he's the opposite. But he makes me laugh every day. And I knew with him I would have a life that hadn't been led before. See, I'm not interested in or drawn to the typical way. I love weird, I love wild dresses, I love unique things. But I will tell you, it doesn't come as natural to me. I have to really push myself there. But I continue to do that because there's great rewards when you do. I'm going to take a little break because we're going to play Truth or Dare. Who here will come up here and play Truth or Dare? Come on up. Okay. Orange is Dare. Blue is truth. What you picking? What do you all think? <laughs> What'd you pick in the beginning? Dare, Dare do it. <laughs> oh, this one's gonna be awesome. <laughs> okay, read it for everybody. <laughs> Show us how you would react to finding out you want a million dollars. If audience finds your reaction believable, I'll give you a hundred. <laughs> Okay. So go. Go. Oh my God! Yes, I want to be. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. There you go. Well, that was a great one to start on. Any other? They're they're not all like that, but (laughs) anybody else want to come up? All right, Isabel, come on down. Truth? Okay. What's something you're really glad your parents don't know about you? Thank you. (laughs) Anybody else? Any other takers? Come on up. I'll do. Dare? Okay. I don't know. It's a cup or a cylinder or something. Candle. That's what it is. Candle. You get to keep it. Is there something else in here? Socks. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Okay, so the last leap I want to share is the most recent. So I started at Cornette, a full-service advertising agency. Where actually, we have the fourth floor of this building. I started there almost 20 years ago. And about four years ago, I took over as president. 
And in December, I purchased 100% of the agency. Thanks. That was something that I spent years thinking about um, and questioning. So many people think like, oh, I can't wait to get to the top. But it's a really great responsibility to hold people's careers and their livelihoods in your hands. Um, so I wanted to make damn sure that I could do it and do it well. But there's this balance for me in this dare to lead. It requires a leap of faith um, to own an agency, to own any business, but especially an agency and especially to be a woman uh, who owns an agency. So here's a truth. Of the 22,000 agencies in the US, how many do you think are owned by women? Somebody. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not, you're not that far off, sadly. Uh, it's 125 of the 22,000 agencies. So, um, and yeah, that's, that's got to be fixed. And that's actually, that's, a, that's another dare. I'm willing to take on a dare to really shine the light on that and raise that number way up. But that's a, that's a whole nother talk. So, to own an agency requires a leap of faith in yourself and in people because the thing about an agency is all it is is people. There's no equipment, there's no products, it's just the creative, genius minds of people. So um, I believe in the people. I bought Cornette because I believe in the people and what's possible for Cornette. And what I have found so far is two things. One is a lot of other people believe in us too. So we were named an Ad Age Small Agency of the Year last month. Uh, and that's a really big thing. Thanks. That's a really big deal in our business. And the entire agency set our minds on it, and we chased it, and we studied it, and we went after it. Um, and it's especially meaningful to us because to be an Ad Age Small Agency of the Year, you have to not just be doing really big, great work. You also have to be a great agency to work for. And you have to be doing work to push the industry forward. So the work to push the industry forward has required me to have some super uncomfortable conversations uh, and force other people to have really uncomfortable conversations. I've been working this past year with a group of other independent agency owners to start BLAC, which is a national internship program led by independent agencies. We believe that the world is missing out on so much creativity when black talent is not seen and heard. And so um, our purpose is to change the face of the industry. So, our mission is to bring more black talent into the creative industry, ensuring that they can fully be themselves, that they can find community, and they can thrive. So what I have found in taking on this Mad Men industry structure is this incredible community. So I want to end by lifting them and their voices up. But before I do that, I want to dare each of you to change the game from truth or dare to truth and dare. See, I've learned in the past few years that things are not one way or the other. They are often both. People are not one thing or the other. They're many things. You don't have to pick sides. It's actually better if you look at all the sides. And I promise when you do, you'll find great things and really great people. I started out as a dreamer and I encourage all of you all to tap into your superpower of dreaming. Don't listen to this world. This world will tell you that your value is based on your condition. And that couldn't be further from the truth. In the industry of ideas, in the market of ideas, all ideas are gonna be rejected a thousand times. 
great ideas are going to be rejected 10,000 times because great ideas are hard and difficult and are going to make people uncomfortable. You're being fed things that connect to your interests all the time. And to a degree, when you're creative, you have to go out of the way to get out of that loop and to challenge the loop of the things that it says are you, um, especially in this data-driven way, because that's where you're going to get new insight, perspective, and information that's going to kind of fuel you to think about things differently. Hi, I'm Kate Ventrino, one of the interns this summer for Building Leaders and Creators. The reason why I wanted to join this program was because I wanted to meet other creators of color like myself, understand how creativity plays a huge role in advertising, and finally, being able to continue making changes in conversations about diversity and inclusion and what that means in all kinds of spaces. Poetry is the way we build, break, embrace, and flourish. Poetry is when bad endings become new beginnings. Poetry is when you get lost and found in sheet of paper, blind by herd and a crowd. You didn't see vibe until your shit is my tool for my liberation and my empowerment. It is my muse, it is my culture, it is my love. Poetry is a part of me, poetry inside DC, poetry is me. Thank y'all.